good to see you again. We're back working on the power smash. And while I was reviewing my notes, preparing for this session, I realized that I don't think I emphasized enough in the previous session about the transfer of energy that needs to happen on the power smash from your back leg onto your front leg. Today we're gonna to talk about the three different feet positions when hitting the power smash. So in order to prepare for that, I really need to know that we're clear on transferring that weight. Because now when we're behind the shuttle, we've got the shuttle approaching, our target arm is up, the shuttle is gonna fall in front of our non-racket foot in front of us. We need to then generate that energy, bending our knees to push forward and upwards into the shuttle. And by doing that, we need to transfer from our back foot onto our front foot, and then follow through with a step. Now, you may have mastered this already, but just to make sure we've covered all the bases, what this is called is the scissor kick. So this is when we transfer our weight from the back foot onto the front foot. And it's called the scissor kick because you'll notice that my legs scissor past one another like a scissor motion. Let me show you. So as I'm hitting, my feet are on the ground, but then as the shuttle's approaching, I'm bending and then pushing my power from my back racket leg up and over onto my non-racket leg. And then while I do that, my racket leg comes forward because I'm keeping that hula hoop of energy going. So naturally, that foot just follows and it helps me for recovering towards the next shot. So it looks like this. See how my legs are scissoring past. Now that's essential to build on because now we're gonna talk about the three types of foot feet positions for hitting the power smash. And the first one is when we have both our feet basically on the ground. So like I was showing, imagining the shuttle's approaching, I'm bending and both my feet are on the ground. I'm not reaching up, I'm not jumping up, I'm just staying steady on the ground and then transferring the weight into the shuttle. This is a great choice for people who are a little older and might find the jump a little difficult or too physically straining. We're gonna talk about the jump smash, that's the third one, but for now, keeping the feet on the ground is a great option. Also, you need to be able to do that even if you are perfectly fit. I can do the jump smash, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna want to or choose to do it every time the chance is there, because it's exhausting. It takes almost double the energy. So sometimes you still wanna hit the power smash without putting in all the energy of the jump smash. At the end of a match, going into the third game, that's when you're gonna be more fatigued and you're gonna to wanna to have options to hit the power smash without needing to do the full power jump. So let's see me hitting some of power smashing from my forehand with both my feet on the ground. Okay, let's try some. So those are the smashes from the forehand side hitting with both our feet planted on the ground and transferring our weight but not adding any jumps. Now for the second feet positioning for the power smash, this is the one where you might not be ambitious enough to want to jump and do the full jump smash but you still want to add some height because by adding height you're going to increase your angle of your power smash. So you might want to add that angle, but not feel confident 
with the control going up on a two foot jump. So this is the one foot jump. And we always want to use our back leg, our racket leg. So that's, for me, my right leg. For a lefty, that will be the left leg. So we're gonna push, bend our knees as we're approaching, turning to the side, and then pushing our weight from the back leg. We're raising our non-racket leg into the air, and then jumping up and getting the scissor kick. So we're still focusing on the scissor kick, but now we're adding some height. So now I'm behind the shuttle, and I'm no longer just stepping forward, I'm jumping up and into the shot. See it again? Let's try some. Okay, the third type of feet positioning for the power smash is the jump smash. This is the one you've been waiting for. This is the exciting one. It's also the difficult one. It takes more physical energy and more skill because everything we've talked about so far, about getting the technique, staying relaxed, contact arm, rotation, core, all of that, we now have to do well up in the air. But the benefits of the jump smash is deception because you're able to hold the shot and your opponent gets tricked a little bit. They don't know what's coming in which direction. And second, most importantly, angle. It's physics. If I'm higher up, I'm gonna have a more direct line passing over the net and down onto my opponent's side. So, this is a shot that's more prevalent right now in the men's game. But there's a lot of girls. I love to jump smash when I was competing. I still like to. And there's a lot of women who are also using the jump smash. I predict in a few years, it'll be just as prevalent in the women's game as it is in the men's game. So all you women out there, don't let anybody ever tell you that there's no jump smashing in the women's game. I can definitely tell you that there are women jumping and there's gonna be more and more because that's the trend. The men's game, because of their physical size, they are pioneering different adaptations and evolutions of the game and the women most certainly and definitely can and will follow that. So to break it down for the jump smash, because this one requires more skill, we need to really bend our knees and the difference is in the timing. We need to prepare more in advance as we would if we were waiting for the shuttle to come to us and hitting it even with the one leg jump or just keeping our feet on the ground. So it requires a lot of practice to get the timing to be able to push off the ground and then extend up, ideally kicking your feet behind you to give you that held positioning in the air and then coming through as you would. Imagine like both my legs are up there. I can't quite stay in the air because otherwise, but holding like this, coming up, through, and down, right? Up, and then together, down. Let's watch me try some. Who says girls can't jump smash? So as you will have noticed, I was pushing off of two feet. That's a difference. So there's not the weight transfer from the back foot to the front foot that we talked about in the first two feet positionings for the smash, for the power smash. So for the jump smash, it's an even weight distribution from both my back and front foot 
I'm bending down to squat to accumulate that energy that I'm going to use to propel myself up into the ground, uh, up into the air, at which point then I'll twist and hit the shot as I do similar, the same as when I'm on the ground. So a great way to practice this is to break it up into, without the shuttle, just practicing the jump up and rotating. Start with a little jump. Don't worry so much about the height. Now, because this is so prevalent in the men's game, we're gonna watch Bobby hit some. But before we do, I wanna mention about the timing of the contact. See, that's what's so challenging about the jump smash. The pros make it look easy, but it's actually one of the hardest shots to hit in all of the game. So the key to the jump smash is that you want to connect with the shuttle once you've already hit the peak of your height. You actually want to hit the shuttle as you're transferring back down to the ground. So you go upwards and then you hit as you're coming back down. That's important because if you hit early on your way up, you're actually still going to be up in the air or still moving up. By the time you get back to the ground, your opponent will already have hit your shot back. And this is all, you know, it's easier to watch in slow motion, but you'll just get the feeling if you go up, hit, and then come back down, that your opponent will already have hit your shot and you'll be late on the next one. Because remember with the smash, we're injecting speed, so that speed is gonna come back to us very quickly as well. So it's important for this that you think about hitting when you go up and then almost as you're feeling the gravity takes over and you're pulling, it's pulling you back down, that's when you connect. So if you imagine my racket is my body, then I'm going up as I'm coming back down, hitting and then landing. So I'm going up, hit, land. I'm not going up, hit, then land. I'm going up, and as I'm transferring back the gravity, hit, and then on my way down, landing. Bobby's great at this, so let's watch him hit some. Notice that smash landing almost a meter in front of the X. So the power coming through, as well as the angle, is what makes that power smash so effective in building up the offense game. So Bobby's jump smashes are pretty impressive. And what you'll notice is how much angle, I mean, he's a tall guy, but the angle he's able to get by jumping up into the air is even greater. And that power smash then comes back so steep that his opponent is going to have to reach down and then you've got the shuttle coming back up over to you and you can just capitalize on that and build up your offense even more. Now, it's important to note that the jump smash can only be hit if you have enough time to prepare to get underneath the shot. So usually the jump smash, I'd say a great percentage of the time is hit off of a high lift. So you have to have been in the position where your opponent is lifting the shuttle up high so the trajectory is giving you enough time to set up underneath it. There are situations more in doubles and mixed doubles because you've got your partner to cover your, the reply of the smash where you can still go for a jump smash as, on a flatter trajectory as long as you have the preparation time necessary to set up and to be hitting it again after you've crested at the top of the jump and on your way back so that you don't get caught on the reply. So the assignment for this week is first to assess which smash feet positioning you want to work on. If you're feeling physically able to do the jump smash, then go ahead and focus on all three. But it's important that we can do all three and not just trying the jump smash. I know that's the one that 
people get excited about, but it's also important that we get the technique and the proper positioning on the standing still, or our standing with our feet both planted, and the one leg jump where we're transferring from our back leg up onto the front leg. If you don't feel physically able, or if you're not feeling ambitious enough to want to try the jump smash, then that's fine. Just focus on the two ones that we mentioned previously, staying on the ground and one leg jump. But even if you're a little worried about the one leg jump, I want you to have the guts to try it because it's gonna give you that little bit extra of energy and angle that you'll feel transferring into your power smash. So specific numbers, I want you to do 20 swings. First of all, just swings without the shuttle with all three different feet positionings. So 20 just on the ground, and then 20 with the one-legged, and then 20, this is the one you might need to break up into sets because it gets exhausting with the jump. 20 jump smashes, down, up, one, down, up, two, and so on. Okay, once you've done those three sets, then go out with the training partner, and that's the fun part where you get to hit some. So I want you to feed each other in a high trajectory at first, just so you have enough time, and then I want you to go through and hit at least 10 shots in each one with the three feet positionings, 10 with the feet on the ground, 10 with the one-legged, and 10 with the jump smash. Rotate back and forth three or four times until you feel like you've got the timing down and you feel like you're getting that electrical current going through you like a circuit of energy into the shuttle. Now I want your comments because if you're doing this right and you're doing the assignments as you should, then you're gonna feel a little frustrated or a little uncomfortable because now I'm pushing you to challenge yourself and extend beyond the game that you used to play. This is where we're bringing in new stuff and challenging our limits. So until next time, step your game up.